Hello everybody and welcome, my name is David Radford and today we're going to be going over some advanced cloth simulation techniques. We're going to be covering some tricks that will allow you to run cloth simulations on types of meshes that would normally be impossible to simulate within Blender. Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to be going over some advanced cloth simulation techniques. I'm not actually going to spend a whole lot of time going over cloth settings because that's not what we're covering today. We're going to be covering how to simulate high resolution, detailed, thick meshes. So we've all seen simple cloth simulations in Blender. You know, we've always just set up something really simple like a plane with some pinning. So here I've got basically that exact same setup. I've got this sphere set up as a collision object. I've got cloth applied to this and I'm just using the default leather right here and then I do have pinning set up and you can see I've just pinned just the the corners of it okay so doing this you get pretty much exactly what you'd expect if I go ahead and play this back ah we have cloth falls down hits the sphere does exactly what we would want now oh, well, let's take this a little bit further so let's go here and let's uh Let's add a subdivision surface so now when it simulates it smooths out. Notice that the subsurf is after the cloth so that's going to smooth out the simulation a little bit. Uh, make it smooth. Now this is super pretty. Awesome. This only works in very very limited circumstances. Having very thin cloth isn't very realistic and it's going to cause a lot of problems. So for this, it works perfectly fine. It does exactly what we'd expect. Problem gets much more intense when we have, say, a mesh like this. Wow. Okay, so if I was to try to simulate this, it would just be an absolute nightmare. It would actually just be impossible. I mean, here I've got thickness to the geometry. It would end up clipping through itself. I've got buttons that would just fall off and yeah, I don't even want to get into what this would be like to try to simulate this mesh as it was even if I could get it to stay intact the level of detail in this I mean I've got some and look at this this is ridiculous I've got tassels hanging off the bottom and these are all high resolution there's not too many circumstances where you would have to simulate something this high resolution but let's t let's see what it can handle so simulating this absolutely impossible. Simulating this, very easy. So let's try to take the two and combine them. So we're going to use a simple little trick here and it's using the mesh deform modifier. So if I just go here and select my high resolution model here and I've already got subsurface and I've got particle system. The tassels are actually hair strands and I'll touch on that a tiny bit later. But So if I just select this Go down to Mesh Deform, select Plane 002, which is actually the, the name of this guy right here. Didn't take the time to name it. And Bind. All right, let's see what happens. Ah, I get nothing. Now, the reason for that is that for the Mesh Deform modifier to work, it has to be, def it has to be completely encapsulated inside the mesh that's deforming it. Okay, but I thought I said that you couldn't simulate thick meshes. Here's where the trick comes in. On my deforming mesh, there right, let's get rid of that mesh deform modifier again real quick. On the mesh that's being simulated, I go in here and I add a solidify modifier. Now this, like I said, has to completely wrap around the high definition mesh. So I'm going to go here to my side view and I'm going to bring the offset up. No, oh, I'm going to set it to zero. And I'm going to adjust the thickness, move that up, just make it so that it wraps around it perfectly. Now another thing that I'm going to do is that this particular mesh, the back of it is at a different point because I've got overlapping geometry. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to move these ones up because I want to make sure that any collisions happen on the back of my high def geometry. I don't want them to be clipping through. Just my offset there again. So now 
by just using the solidify modifier after the cloth and subsurf, I've given myself a nice cage. So you'll see if I go just to layer one and I play this back. Aha! I've got a nice thick cloth simulation. There we go, it's hitting the sphere where I would expect it to. So now, going back to layer two on my high definition model, I'm going to add mesh deform, select plane 002 again. For this particular model, precision level five has been perfectly fine for this. Uh, depending on the size of the model and the complexity, you may have to adjust this. Dynamic, other than it saying that it takes more memory, I can't really see a difference on that. It may have something to do with armature deformed meshes. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, always, always, always save your project before you click bind. I actually locked up my computer a little bit ago. Um, I actually have 32 gigs of RAM and it had allocated 70. So my computer locked up. I had to rebuild a lot of this. Always save before you click bind. This can, this can take a little bit of time and it's not multi-threaded. So having 12 cores isn't going to do you a whole lot of good. For this particular mesh, it's not that heavy, so I'm not too worried about it. Now also, depending on your exact needs, play with where the mesh deform modifier sits on your high resolution model. Uh, for this one, I'm choosing to put it after for now, but I'll show you what it looks like with it before as well. Alright, so now I go ahead and play this back. Ah, got a couple of problems here. You'll notice that my tassels stayed up on top. So that is because the mesh deform modifier is in the wrong place because the tassels being hair strands and growing off of the bottom of the high def model, that doesn't work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this all the way up to the top. And you'll see that it says verts changed from 63,000 to 4,000. That's because it was being calculated after the subsurf modifier. So I have to unbind and rebind. And this time it should go a little bit faster because I'm not binding as many vertices. There we go. Go back to frame zero. And just to make this play back a little bit faster, I'm going to bring my subsurf level down to one. There we go. So very simple, very straightforward, being able to animate a 30,000 poly mesh with a cloth simulation. And just for completeness, I'm going to go over the tassels, how I did those. So you'll notice that when, when this swings down, the tassels actually do hang back. And then when it hits the bottom, they all whip individually. So I did this using a hair system. So you'll see on layer three, I've just got this little tiny tassel and it's modeled up. It's way too high poly for this, but I was having fun anyways. So what I've got here, I go to my particle systems. I'll just rebuild this for you here. Delete that. Now I'm going to create a new particle system. Set it to hair. Ah, everywhere. Set the number to zero, so I don't have any at first. And then under render, I'm going to set it to object. And I'm going to choose my tassel, which is conveniently called cylinder. And I'm going to reset the size to one. And then just by going down here, ah, one thing that I notice is that particle edit mode doesn't like modifiers. So when you're doing that, go ahead and just disable the visibility on all your modifiers. Particle edit, set it to add, and then everywhere that I wanted a tassel, I just clicked and added individual hair strands.
There we go. And then I'm just going to go in the top view, select cut, and just cut them off. Now, when I go out of particle edit mode, you'll see that each one of those hair strands is replaced by a tassel. And then in my hair settings, just enable hair dynamics, and then I set it to 0.5. I'm not entirely sure why. Well, let's see what happens if I do zero. Very soft. Let's turn back my mesh to form and subsurf. Ah, that's why I had it set higher. So with the stiffness set so with with the default of zero for hair stiffness, I was having they they were colliding through the object. So I'm gonna come back here. Set that to 0.5. Let's see if that does the trick. There we go. So they don't quite go there. And they've got a good amount of overlap. I've still got some collision going on, but let's just say that for this particular use that I don't, I'm not worried about that. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Go ahead and click subscribe to keep up to date on the latest tutorials that I put out, and you can also follow me on Twitter at, at DMRadford.